Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Locked On Flames. I'm your host, Jess Belmosto. If you're new here, hello, hi, make sure that you click subscribe. And uh, a little bit about me is that I do writing for a few different places. I am a public relations specialist for the Metropolitan Riveters, and I run fan communications over there. Uh, today's episode, we are going to talk about the arena debacle and the technicalities of everything and just kind of <laughs> how awful uh, these billionaires are. So let's not waste any time and jump right into it. Your Locked On Flames, your daily podcast on the Calgary Flames, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Well, my goodness, what <laughs> what a night. Uh, yesterday, after I wrapped up recording, the mayor of Calgary tweeted out that <laughs> the Flames have backed out of the arena deal, and the mayor was very clear that she did not want taxpayers to have to pay for the new arena, and I think that that's very fair. Um, the mayor announced that additional costs would have to be funded by the Calgary Sports Entertainment Corporation, and it just wasn't like a few you know, a few thousand dollars or what have you. It was a lot of money. It was $19 million. And that is just absolutely absurd to ask, you know, local residents and <laughs> taxpayers to front. Uh, I don't know about you guys, but, um, you know, I, I don't live in Calgary. I don't know what taxes are like. I don't know what your taxes are going for or what you personally want your taxes going for. But I live in a state where <laughs> taxes are so high. I feel like there's a tax for just like breathing sometimes. Uh, and I actually, I work in retail and there's a, a tax for the county. Like you pay a tax for the county that you're shopping in. And I didn't know that until like I saw the breakdown of it on a piece of paper. And maybe that makes me silly. Maybe that makes me foolish. But anyways, uh, you know, when my money gets taken out of my paycheck, I kind of expect it to go towards things like paying teachers or fixing the roads or, uh, you know, upgrading the police cars or getting a new fire station, getting them new equipment, um, you know, funding, <laughs> uh, you know, socialized health care and things like that. I don't expect it, nor do I really want it going towards a new arena unless I have a say in what goes down in that arena and what happens on the team. Because you know what? My money is my money. I work hard for it. I <laughs> I think all of us do. And I don't think that it's anything that anybody disagrees with. I think it's absolutely absurd. And if you follow the NFL, you probably remember the uh, San Diego Chargers back in the day. When the their ownership was like, hey, um... We're going to just ask the taxpayers to pay for a new arena uh, or a new stadium. Like, that. that's cool. Uh, it, it does nothing, but excuse my language here, piss a lot of people off. And it you alienate your fans. Like, I know a bunch of people, like San Diego lifetime, re like lifelong residents and, you know, lifelong Philip Rivers fans. <laughs> who, uh, you know, ended up just saying, I, I'm not supporting this. Uh, you can move to LA, do your thing, but I am going to support a different team. And I think that a lot of people do that. And I don't, I personally don't see an issue with it. I think that it's absolutely absurd for billionaires to be like, yeah, no, like the working class people are going to pay for this. That's 
something that's going to line my pockets even more so I can go buy another ski chalet in, uh, you know, Utah or the Alps or something, you know, I just think that it's absurd. And I think that a lot of people would, uh, would agree with me there, but I, I have seen people like kissing, uh, Murray, is it Murray Edwards? Yeah, I think it's Murray Edwards. Um, kind of kissing his butt and whatnot, but I, I don't know. I never. I'm going to talk more about this, but I've never thought to look up the owner of the Flames. Like I knew it was the Calgary Sports Entertainment Corporation, but I never was like, oh, like let me look up the prime primary stakeholder. And the more that I learn about this guy, the more I want this team sold immediately. <laughs> so we're going to talk more about uh, – eating the rich and taxing the rich later on in this episode. But before we do that and jump into technicalities, let's talk about Primal Origin Oils. If you have a beard, you need to get Primal Origin Oils. They are a fantastic product that is sustainable for the planet and they are fantastic to make your beard look healthy. They'll stop the itch and you'll look fantastically groomed. These products are free from harmful synthetic ingredients and they make balms, oils, and whipped butter that are renowned as the best feel and beard products available. All products are fair trade certified and handcrafted in the United States. These combo kits make a great holiday gift. Um, uh, probably not now because cutting a little bit close, but you know, if you got somebody a birth, uh, you know somebody with a birthday in January or February, hop on to primaloriginoils.com and use promo code locked on to get twenty percent off of your order, so you can get them a nice, clean, healthy, itch-free beard. That is primaloriginoils.com with promo code locked on for twenty percent off. And of course, you guys know that it, it's truly not a Locked on Flames episode. If I'm not raving about Built Bars, I put one in my hot chocolate the other day, put one in my coffee, and oh my goodness, it's just like so like sweet goodness, and it's healthy for you because they are high in protein, high in fiber, low in sugar, low in calories. They're great for anyone trying to maintain weight or lose weight. They have so many flavors. They have raspberry, mint brownie, cherry, double chocolate, peanut butter brownie, you name it. And Built Bar gives you that extra fuel you need to get through your days and to get through the holidays. So head on over to Built.com today and da uh, <laughs> use promo code LOCKED15 to get 15% off of your order. If you like some marshmallowy treats, you need to get your hands on Built Bar Puffs. They are light, fluffy, and marshmallow marshmallowy through and through. They have different flavors. They're all covered in chocolate. They taste delicious, and you won't believe that they're filled with protein. I am someone who is very picky about my chocolate and my uh, candy bars. And <laughs> Built Bar, it, it honestly reminds me of a Milky Way. So head on over to Built.com and use promo code LOCK15 to get 15% off of your next order. Thank you so much for tuning in to Locked on Flames. Uh, very happy to have you here. <laughs> uh, you know, I feel like kind of guilty <laughs> for just being very negative around this time of year but you know <laughs> this is just some nonsense and I just the technicalities and the breakdown of these numbers is truly something so the this is a quote from an article uh, something so the city and the company would split the cost of the new 600 million dollar multi-use event center which would include an 18,000 seat arena this july the sides the two sides renegotiated the contract and csec agreed 
to assume more than 50% of the overall costs, now estimated to total $634 million. Yes, doll hairs. Um, that That's a lot of money. <laughs> you know, looking at that, uh, I, I just, I can't fathom ever seeing that much money in my life. Or working, doing something for work that would make me amass that amount, <laughs> that amount of money or anything like that. But I, the, the mock-up of the arena looks beautiful. It looks modern. It, <laughs> it does look kind of weird with how square and like boxy it is, but I, I think that that's how a lot of people felt about SoFi at first, or um, I can't remember if it was SoFi or um, Vegas for the Raiders. And it honestly, it gives me vibes of Patriots Place in uh, where the New England Patriots play and where it could be built up around it. Like it has like shopping plazas and restaurants and it gives me those kind of vibes. And because it is downtown, obviously you're going to be drawing in, you know, wanderers and whatnot. <laughs> so I just, I, I'm, I love the idea of a new arena Although I am selfishly still team get just to the Saddle Dome. Yes. Uh, <laughs> but it's just, I think a new arena would obviously do wonders for the for the team, for fan, for the fan experience. And a lot of comments yesterday were people saying, why <laughs> why is ownership, you know, the ownership group only talking about how much money this will bring and they they don't care about the fans and like the experience or anything like that <laughs> and people were saying <laughs> there was one exchange between two people that was just kind of like uh the people of Calgary deserve a world class like high tech modern venue like that's what drives people to move here <laughs> and somebody <laughs> commented underneath and was like who on earth is moving to calgary for the flames and i was just dying because i'm like who moves to calgary for the flames like unless you're covering the team or some or like unless you play for them that is not a dig to anyone who lives in calgary it just like it just gives me such middle of nowhere vibes and i quite literally live in the middle of nowhere in upstate new york so it's just I don't know it's just that exchange was funny to me and people in the comments of articles today just kept saying you know the flames uh, or the saddle dome has to be one of the worst arenas um you know fans deserve better the players also deserve better for the away team and the visiting or the away team and the home team so, you know, we'll have to keep an eye on that. And I, this really just feels like a weird negotiation tactic because it's like, okay, no, like we're backing out, even though everything else is in order, we're just going to back out of this. It's totally fine. And then I think that the mayor is just kind of waiting for them to come back and say, okay, you know, we did agree to take on a lot of this and we overestimated how much we could take on at first but now now we're okay you know we we shifted some money around we we reallocated funds and we canceled buying a new resort it's fine and they'll renegotiate it so it works and i <laughs> Like I mentioned, I had never taken the time to look into Murray Edwards. To be honest, I didn't really know his name until yesterday because I just assumed it was like a big group who owned the Flames. And that's kind of – this is like my fault, honestly. But <laughs> this guy has like packed up and move and just like left when – He's asked to pay his fair share of taxes, and we're going to talk about that next, but learning about this guy, made, it just made me feel so much better about myself because what on earth is wrong 
with these people, <laughs> with these rich people. Um, like, are you surprised that this man doesn't want to chip in a fair share of money <laughs> for his team's arena? I feel like this would be if I went to, you know, the bank and said, I'm going to take out a mortgage for my home, but I'm only taking out a mortgage of, you know, let's say 60%. Oh, are you paying, you know, for the rest up front? No, you're, you're going to pay for it. Or the previous homeowners, you know, I'm going to make them pay for it. It just doesn't make any sense. Like there's no rationale behind it. And I'm just not surprised. <laughs> It's a it's rich people, you know. <laughs> I feel like they're very out of touch with reality, but we're going to talk more about that coming up next. Uh, but first, let's talk about Bet Online AG. Bet Online AG is your best place for sports online betting. Bet Online AG is uh, fully revamped, and they have a beautiful new layout on their website that you can check out on your mobile device or your desktop, and you can play your favorite Vegas casino games or bet on the NHL, MLB, just kidding, not the MLB because uh, they're not in season and uh, it, it, MLB doesn't really exist at the moment. NFL, college football, you name it, bet online AG has it all. And of course, you can get a 50% welcome bonus when you sign up today and use promo code locked on for that 50% welcome bonus. So, all you have to do is head on over to Bet Online AG today, sign up for your free account, make that first deposit and use promo code locked on. Locked on Flames continues. Thanks for following me uh here on the show and make sure that you are subscribed wherever you get your podcasts. So, like I've mentioned <laughs> many times tonight uh, <laughs> I, I didn't I truly just thought it was like a bunch of stakeholders who owned the flames I I didn't know who they were what how they got rich or anything like that so Murray Edwards is like the primary stakeholder and the primary owner and this guy <laughs> is an oil mogul who owns a ton of ski resorts and he once owned properties in Banff Banff Banff, Ban, Ban, Banff. I don't know why I'm struggling to say it out loud because I can read it fine. <laughs> and Calgary, but when there was a personal tax increase of uh, ten to fifteen percent, that man packed up everything. He listed those two properties and he got the hell out of Dodge. It, you know, him and his representative said no like it had nothing to do with that and absolutely nothing to do with this tax increase and then here we are a few years later and he ditches london oh yeah so he moves from calgary to london I, I don't know how you again i don't know how people this is rich people thing this is so out of my element but you know he moves to london for a few years and then oh suddenly taxes are going up in london so he moves to Switzerland and it came out last year that so in 2020 uh, that his primary residence was Switzerland. And, uh, I, I don't know what taxes look like in foreign countries. Uh, I, I don't really know what they look like for rich people in general. I just know that they don't pay enough in comparison to what I'm paying. <laughs> but I I don't know. How long is he going to last in Switzerland before they're like, hey, bud, you're going to pay a fair share of your taxes because you are in this income bracket. And hey, you own multiple ski resorts across the country of Canada, the whole country. You have some in uh, in Alberta. You have some in Quebec, which are like on opposite sides of the country. OK, and I'm going to I. I live near Quebec, and you know where I'm not going to go skiing? Not that I ski. I'm clumsy. But I'm going to make sure I don't give this man a penny of my money through skiing or winter sports. <laughs> I just, this, what a cheapskate. Like, this is so unethical and gross. I can't say I'm surprised by 
him not wanting to pay his fair share uh, when it comes to these negotiations because He just doesn't seem like the kind of guy who um, <laughs> forks over money when it's due. This doesn't seem surprising at all. Um, I, I don't know. This is this just sits funny with me. Uh, and, you know, this really could be a ne negotiation tactic, but we'll have to see. <laughs> I just, uh, I, I don't know. This is, It's a really cheap and scummy thing to do. I I hope that the mayor comes back and kind of like laughs at him and says what what did you think was going to happen cuz we're not folding um I, and I didn't I wanted to save this for the end of the show because I didn't really want to talk about it more throughout the show but if what I'm reading is correct and I'm you know I typically follow just a few people from Calgary, but their, you know, Alberta legislation tweets pop up on my feed. And Alberta has unfortunately, like, been mismanaged by their local government uh, through COVID. And they've been, they have had really bad numbers at times. And it's just kind of unfortunate to say, like, oh, yeah, all these people who um, you know, have been, at, who were out of work or have lost loved ones or, you know, potentially lost income, um, they're going to be the ones to fork over the money for, <laughs> for my new arena. But that's really all I have for today. We're going to have to talk about the Olympics tomorrow and, uh, air some grievances because it is, of course, Festivus. So thank you all so much for tuning in to today's episode of Locked on Flames. And you can find me on Twitter at Jess Belmosto. And thank you so much for tuning in. Bye-bye.